Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. We were just talking in the last break to a father whose 11 year old daughter was tasered by the police rather than talk to her, rather than try to ascertain why she was walking alongside the road without any clothes. Calmly walking alongside the road, according to the eyewitness cab driver who called the police, they just tasered her. She didn't obey their orders. They just tasered her. They could see that she didn't have any weapons because she wasn't wearing any clothes. She's autistic. That's why she was out at that time. They didn't try to ascertain that. And the question is, what are we going to do to try to control government at the local level? And it's getting worse. The 2014 National Defense Authorization Act is now being constructed. And it's getting worse every year with this. If you remember last year, I think the first one that came out was in 2012. And remember, uh, Barack Obama was not going to sign that. And he said he didn't need it. And then at the last minute on a New Year's Eve, he signed it and then said, don't worry, I'm not going to enforce it. Then when it came up for reauthorization, they said that they were going to put some protections in it. And we had Dianne Feinstein come in and put a fig leaf amendment in it that... Stuart Rhodes of Oath Keepers and others argued really wasn't going to do anything, but it gave cover to senators who might have to oppose it because of their commitments to civil liberties. It actually got unanimous support in the Senate and never got to be tested because when it went to the joint committee to be reconciled between the Senate and the House, McCain and the House members just arbitrarily threw that out. And so it stood just as it was the year before. Well, now it's coming around again for 2014. And it's actually going to get worse. What they're doing is, and we talked about this at the beginning, they, just like with the immigration bill, they do things that violate the law or they don't enforce the law. And then what they come in and do later is they pass a law that justifies what they've been doing all along. And that's what we're seeing happening with the NDAA Act. We know that for a long time, the government has been tapping people's phone lines. We know that they've been storing data. They've been mining the data. This is starting to come out now, just the tip of it, just the tip of it with Ed Snowden's releases. They're still talking about how, don't worry, it's only the metadata. Well, that's not what we're hearing from NSA whistleblowers. They're telling us it's everything, and they're telling us that it's been stored. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a interview with one of the original NSA whistleblowers on the Boiling Frogs Dot com website. Now, that's Seabell Edmonds' site. She has uh, been one of the premier whistleblowers. Daniel Ellsberg called her one of the most important whistleblowers ever, said she was more important than the revelations that he had about the Pentagon Papers. Seabell Edmonds was an FBI translator, and she had information that the FBI was actually working with al-Qaeda leading up to 9-11. And uh, she was... They came after her pretty hard, but she's got a site here. She talks to a, another NSA whistleblower, Russ Tice, and this is something you need to go by and take a look at on their website. In this video, Mr. Tice explains in detail how the NSA targets, sucks in, stores, analyzes, and illegally obtained content from the masses in the United States. And he maintains that the new data center that's being built in Utah, the NSA's Utah facility is already operating and online. We've been told that it's not going to come online and start operating until sometime in September. He says it's already online. He reveals that the NSA is a deep state that targets and wiretaps U.S. political candidates for their own purpose. And that's a very interesting relevation because if they can come after political candidates, and he mentions a Supreme Court judge that is now sitting, he doesn't mention by name, if they can blackmail and investigate judges and CIA directors, they can come after you as well. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. And while we're on this topic of what's legal and what's not, as we were talking about just before the hour, the new NDAA 2014 is coming up, and in an article from uh, truthout.org, they point out that two sections, section 
206 of the Patriot Act that permitted government to obtain secret court orders allowing roving wiretaps without requiring identification of the person, organization, or facility to be surveyed, and Section 215 of the Patriot Act authorizing government to access and obtain any tangent, tangible thing that is relevant to a terrorist investigation. Those were things that joined the FISA Act that was passed all the way back in 1978. Now, FISA has come into the news quite a bit with the revelations from Ed Snowden. And it was the core thing behind the resignation of several whistleblowers right after September 11th. Whistleblowers William Binney, Drake, and Weeby all testified that they tried to get the NSA to not do what it did after September 11th, and that is use a dragnet to get domestic information. Prior to that, since 1978, the NSA had been looking at foreign information. And these guys were technical personnel who had developed a system they called ThinThread. And with ThinThread, they would eliminate domestic information. But the U.S. government, in the aftermath of 9-11, went with a different program called Trailblazer. And they criticized it not only for its blatant violation of the Constitution, blatant violation and extension of the powers that they had been given with FISA, the unlawful extension of those powers, but they also pointed out that it wasn't even effective. Just like the TSA is not effective as a security organization at the airport, this was not effective in terms of trying to find people who really were the needles in the haystack of this data, the people who really were bad actors. It was absolutely ineffective in that, but it was a very expensive program. It transferred a lot of money to the companies that were well-connected within the military-industrial complex, and it's their accusation that that's the reason they went with it. These people tried to reform this internally. They followed all the internal procedures, going to the inspector general, going to the Department of Justice, but uh, they came after them personally, indicted all of them, eventually let the three, three of the four people go. They came after Drake and tried to pin him down because of a bogus charge that he had mishandled documents. They didn't accuse him of transmitting any state secrets. And it turned out that the documents they had listed, many of them were not classified. Some of them had been retroactively classified after they found them in his residence. And they are now very outspoken critics. And as I mentioned just before the break, there is a Russ Tice, who is also a critic of the NSA, a former NSA whistleblower. And in an interview on BowlingFrogs.com, that's Seabell Edmonds, a FBI whistleblower about 9-11. This is the money quote from that interview. He said, here's the big one. This was the summer of 2004. One of the papers that I held in my hand was to wiretap a bunch of numbers associated with a 40-something-year-old wannabe senator for Illinois, he said. You wouldn't happen to know where that guy lives right now, would you? Well, it's a big White House in Washington, D.C. They basically went after Barack Obama. So this is something that's been going on for a long time. And we don't excuse this by saying that it started with Bush. Because Obama, as the subject of these kind of illegal investigations, has now turned around and made it even worse. And made it even more public. And that's the real danger. Stay tuned. Right after the break, we're going to be talking to Dr. William Pepper. And we're going to ask him what he thinks about the surveillance state and what he thinks about what this country is turning into as far as ignoring human rights and the Constitution. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. 